You should never have any other prayer that you pray go unanswered. Why do you always pray and you find that uh, it's like your prayers are never answered? My friends, you see, prayer is it's not verbal. Prayer is mental. And when I talk about this, I'm sure most people might wonder, Keith, what are you trying to say? If you're saying prayer is uh, mental, not verbal, what do you mean? You see, prayer is a conversation. And um, remember, God is spirit. And if God is spirit, he doesn't speak loudly. Have you ever heard one day someone praying and then he says, Oh, Lord, and then he says, eh. No. It doesn't work like that. It is a still small voice which speaks to you from within. So prayer is a conversation. And remember, God is spirit. And uh, he always doesn't speak loudly. He speaks from within. And uh, another problem that people do not understand, apart from just not praying from inside, is they do not understand that uh, Prayer requires faith. You see, the Bible tells us in the book of Mark uh, 11, 24, that whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. So it is about believe and then you receive. If you don't believe, then you don't receive. Do you get the picture here? And believing is uh, an aspect of the spiritual, okay? Is is a spiritual thing. So it, it's first spiritual, then physical. And spiritual means it's all about faith, confidence, feeling. Remember I told you that faith is a feeling. And then you receive. So you must have this feeling that I'm going to receive. And then you shall receive. It shall manifest to you. It has to start mentally and then spiritually and then physically. It has to start from the mind and then physically. It has to start from the thought and then physically. Do you get the point there? So, my friends, whatever you know, and when I talk about the word knowing, I am upgrading faith to knowing. You see, faith might also have a probability, some small chance of, uh, you know, of uh, not being really sure. But knowing is like, I believe in this person. And someone else says, I know this person. Who between the two are you going to go for? Who actually understands the person well? It is the one who knows him. And that's why God says, they shall know me as I know them. Not they shall believe me as I believe them. No. They shall know. Know is a, an aspect of you getting some, some amount of faith which is, which is already affirmed. Some faith which is affirmed is called knowledge. And that's why God wants us to know him. And of course, he tells us the easiest way that we can know him is by using his mind. Remember Philippians 2. Uh, 5 to 11 it talks about let this mind which was in christ be in you this mind which was in christ be in you jesus knew god he knew the father and he wants us to know him so that when we ask anything from him we will receive it because we know him but if you don't know him then my friends there's nothing you'll be doing now something else some people when they pray they pray wrongly and uh they think because I'm shouting, I'm saying so many words, is that is why I'm being heard. I've seen people like uh, online, they say, oh, I've been praying for many hours. Like there's another Nigerian uh, pastor called Eze, Jerry Eze, who has like prayer meetings of uh, 12 hours. You know, what are you saying for 12 hours? Sweating and sweating and shouting and repeating words. Is that what the Bible says? Let's see what God said about prayer in matthew 6 6 the bible says when you pray go into your room and when you have shut your door pray to your father who is in the secret place and your father who is in the secret place shall reward you 
openly. Did you hear those words? So go into your room. Room means what? This body is our house. The house where we live in. This is our room. This is where we live in. We don't live in a three-bedroom house. This is where we live in. We are spirits with bodies. So room means get into your mind. That is where you communicate to God. Get into your mind. Room means mind. And uh, close your door. What are the doors? The five senses. These are the doors to the house. This house. We have eyes. We have ears. We have taste. We have smell. Close all those senses. Stop reasoning from the third dimension. Get out from that. And get within you. All right? And uh, pray to your father. Prayer means what? Ask believing, knowing. What I just told you. Ask knowing that you shall receive. That is what prayer is all about. To your father who is in the secret place. Where is the secret place? God lives in our minds. He lives in us, in our minds. Who is in the secret place? And the one who is in the secret place shall reward you openly. Or he shall make your wishes manifest. Your wishes or the things that you prayed for shall be manifested in the open, in the outside. So it's going to start from the spiritual side to the physical side. You understand this? And remember, don't have two minds when you're praying. Sometimes people pray, oh God, please give me healing. But within themselves, they don't believe that they will be healed. They still have option B. If it doesn't heal me, have these panadols, have these pain relievers. No. The Bible says in the book of James 1.8 that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Are you double-minded? And let him understand that he shall receive nothing of God. If you're double-minded, my friend, you'll not receive anything. All right? And when you look at verse 7 of uh, Matthew 6.7, it says, And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions like the heathens do. For they think that they will be heard for their many words. Is that not what people do in churches today? They repeat and repeat and repeat the same sentence. That's why they are never heard. Vain repetition does you nothing. They do you no good. All right? Words. Words. You, 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 when you use words, you only speak into the third dimension, which is what we see, space, time, and matter. But when you... Pray from within, you are outside the third dimension. You are in the mind which is limitless. The mind is limitless. You can think of heaven, you see it. You think of America, you see it. You think of Africa, you see it. You think of Asia, you see it. Is, there is no time, space, and matter. You get the point? So you get into a place where God dwells, where there is no time, space, and matter. Get out of the third dimension when you pray. I'm not saying that people cannot use words. But do they tally with what is inside? Because what is inside is the most important. <laughs> what you pray, remember the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You only speak what is in your heart, what you have already prayed in your heart, what is already in your heart, right? So, the only language of the sub subconscious mind is emotion. My friends, you have to understand this. Emotion is the only language that the subconscious mind understands. And that emotion is what we are looking for, is what God is looking for. And that emotion translates to feeling. And feelings means faith. You cannot have faith unless you feel, I feel this person is good. So I believe he is good. So I know he is good. You see, faith is a feeling, my friends. All right? So in conclusion, understand that you shall be heard by the mental declaration of who you want to be not by many words you understand so it's not about your many words but it's by your mental declaration of who you want to be god i want to be healed god i want to receive this god i believe i have all the capacities to be able to achieve this don't just say something and you do not understand make sure you have the capacities of it if god gives you that one million you're looking for do you have the capability to handle it? Because don't ask things just like a child who says, Oh God, daddy buy me a car. And he knows very well that he cannot drive. You know, ask according to his will. And he shall grant you the wishes of your heart.